Hello and welcome back to The Lion's Den, the only podcast that has the creator confused about how it works. Anyway, I'm your host Matt as always, and I have two things that I want to discuss today. Let's start with the more interesting one, hopefully, fingers crossed. So, um, I decided for the fun of it to start making some YouTube shorts, because why not? They're short, they're easy to create. I mean, at least the ones I'm creating. The ones I've seen on YouTube are actually kind of ridiculous. People make full-on sketch comedies within that minute time frame, and I don't understand how. Like, that must take actual editing and stuff to do. I wonder how you make a video and upload it to YouTube shorts. I don't know. Anyway, people make some really cool content on there, and I just saw this as a really quick thing to do. Just as something entertaining and fun to try and see what would happen if I threw random stuff out into the universe. And I've just been using my phone, because that's all I have, and to be honest, that's really all you need. So the first one, well actually, I tell a lie. The first couple of shorts I made were update videos that I made ages ago just to let you know what was happening with the podcast. So, like, saying that things had moved to being on a Sunday or that I'd missed a week. And that was literally the only two YouTube shorts I'd made. And the funny thing was is they had way more views than any of my actual podcast episodes. So I find that hilarious. But I imagine it's just because it's short form. People find it, they have a quick watch, and then they move on with the day, right? Whereas this is 10 minutes and you need time to sit down and listen. These, I thought, would do the exact same. I posted one a couple of days ago where I just took a video of the sky in the car park whilst I was having lunch. I was like, why is the weather good when you're at work? Because it's annoying. I got like 17 views. Pretty nice. I was kind of expecting maybe five. And to see it in double digits was really cool. And then I posted the video yesterday where I showed off this piece of art that's also at my workplace, that makes no sense because it looks like a young teenage woman's body with a male head on it, like a a, 40 year old male head on the top of the body. And I just, I didn't say anything. I panned over, I shook my hand vigorously at it. That was it. I thought, oh, that's kind of funny to me. Whatever, moving on. The views, the views, what is happening? I expected, again, like maybe 10, considering the last one got 17. No, 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 this thing just skyrocketed. Something threw my video into the YouTube sphere and people are now looking at it and I don't understand why. I was looking at like, I think yesterday evening when I got home, I looked at it and I was sitting there thinking, why has this got 300 views? Why have people spent an hour collectively watching me wave my hand at this obscure piece of art? And then this morning, I look at it, it's got 700 views. What is happening? Why? (laughs) I don't understand. And it's like steadily going up more and more. Uh, Like looking at the, the analytics graph, there's just this like steady ramp and this spike where it jumps like 300 odd views. And then it went quiet, and now it started going up again. And I don't understand how. <laughs> like, the, I think it's insane that 50% of people, when they find this video, view it. Why? What are you... Why? This, this was just something stupid that I made as a joke that I thought, you know, me and my friends would find funny. And for some reason, it's actually reached a bunch of people. Like, my views have never been so high <laughs> in the YouTube studio. I actually have... A triple digit figure in terms of views and a watch time over an hour. My brain is actually melting. So, I mean, my thoughts are, right, I do this podcast mainly for my friends because it's just a great way for them to keep in touch and listen to me and things that are going on. And if anybody else stumbles upon this video and finds it fun and interesting, great. That's the whole point. It's supposed to be entertaining for you because I find podcasts entertaining. That's the whole idea. I might just start making shorts, you know? If I see something funny and weird or interesting and cool, I'll make a, like, five-second video of it because it's zero effort, and if literally people find it weird and interesting like this, why not, right? It's just more things for people to enjoy. It also has likes. Most of my videos don't have likes, but this has likes, so... Anyway, I thought that was cool and interesting and fun, so there's that great. I think it's just because it's quick and digestible, and as long as I find something vaguely entertaining, i.e. that picture being really bizarre, why not? I think there's more pieces of those art in the building, so I might just make more videos of those weird pieces of art for people to uh, look at with me. Um, 
Also, my cat is being extremely adorable. I thought she would run off. So she came in and she sat on the bed with me. And then I got up and sat down to start recording. I thought she would run off because, you know, cats don't tend to like really loud noises. And obviously I'm talking fast and quite loudly. She looked up at me and then she just put her head back down and I think she's just chilling. She's in that weird thing that cats do where they are, quote, asleep, but not deep sleep. Because I don't think cats deep sleep from what I've heard. Maybe I should make shorts of my cat. Cats. Cats are great, right? (laughs) Anyway, the other thing I want to talk about is I finally, finally, finally bought a keyboard. I thought I'd save this because it's a bit slower, a bit less interesting, but I bought a keyboard, finally. I decided to pull the trigger whilst I was at work because I thought, oh, I can order it whilst I'm working in the office this entire week and then it will arrive and I can mess around with it over the weekend and decide if I'm okay with it or not. And it came a day later. That was the impressive thing. I didn't pay for uh, next day shipping or anything. I just paid for standard shipping and it was like, oh, it'll come on the weekend. Nope, it came the next day. And I was like, well, this is great because <laughs> I got free next day shipping, essentially. I really like it. To cut to the chase, it's I'm really happy with it. And I'm so glad that one, I spent the time to find something good, but two, that I managed to land exactly on what I wanted or very close to what I wanted, which I will touch on. So I bought the Echo 5075S, I think, RGB. It is a 75% keyboard in the UK layout, because obviously that's what I type on. Interesting thing is the difference between a UK layout and the US layout, so that's the difference between ISO and ANSI, is a few keys. So the biggest one that's really annoying is they swap the at symbol and the quotation mark symbol, or literally they just swap that symbol on those two keys. The enter key is a whole different shape, and because of that, then a couple other keys are shifted around in different places, but it's like maybe six, seven keys that get changed. Otherwise, it's about the same. But for me, it's that enter key and where the keys around the enter key then get sent because of the different shape in the US layout that I wouldn't be able to get on with, basically. So that's fine. Managed to get that. That's the biggest problem for Oslo is finding UK layouts because I was hellbent for ages on getting a UK ISO layout and getting a TKL keyboard. So with the arrow keys and the buttons above it but not the number pad and that's just really hard to find um so i eventually gave up and went with the 75 percent because that is so much more easy to find the 75 percent my biggest concern is that the 75 percent don't have a print screen button but they do have it because it's a like macro function key button thing so that's fine it's much more easier than i was worried about so i am thoroughly impressed it sounds great out of the box the um I think they're called Echo Clear Switches. They sound really nice. There is no ping whatsoever. So that's great. That was the biggest issue I had with pre-built gaming keyboards is they are all pingy and that was horrible. And that was the thing I was trying to get away from from my previous gaming keyboard. Um, it sounds lovely. It's, I would dare I say, thucky. It's got a little bit of a thunk to it, but it's a pleasing sound and it's quieter than every other keyboard I've got despite having that like thunk to it. So that's good. Okay, that worked my cat up, me <laughs> inhaling through my nose because I was getting a bit weird. I was really impressed with what came with it, actually. So it comes with the keyboard, it comes with a USB-C cable, it comes with a good style keycap puller, the one with the little metal wires that you can clip around the keycaps. It comes with the switch puller, which is a metal tweezer style pair, which is also nice. Um, it comes with extra keycaps for both accenting in the yellow color that it comes in, as well as just ones with images on so like for example your escape key everyone knows where the escape key is you know what it does you don't really need a thing on it that says escape so for example they give you ones with the echo skull logo there's one with a paw print that i decided to chuck on uh there's a couple other ones i think one's like um those fish flag things i cannot think what they're called they're like a koi fish that's on a pole so that when the wind blows through it it puffs open and then waves around in the wind that's there's one of those i don't know what that's called but I'm sure you know what I mean. But yeah, I'm very happy. I bought as alongside it silent switches because that's what I was aiming for was a silent keyboard. But I didn't like the silent switches because they're very scratchy and pingy. I imagine they just need a lubrication, but that requires buying a lot more things to do. And also, I don't know how to do it properly. So 
I just want something that I can put into the keyboard and it'd be great. So if I want to, in the end, I will just go find some decent silent switches and then I can put them into the keyboard. Because to be fair, that was the whole point with this keyboard is it's hot swap. So I was thinking, well, I buy the keyboard, I buy the switches, I can just shove them in. The stupid thing I didn't realize is I didn't account for the fact that the keyboard would come with the keycap puller and the switch puller. I didn't even think about that to be honest, so the fact that it came with those was very fortunate, otherwise I would have had switches and a keyboard and no way to put them together. So anyway, that's great, I'm very happy with this. Oh yeah, I got a mouse pad, or mouse mat, or a keyboard mat, desk mat. You know the big thing, on your desk? I got one of them, it's really pretty and I like the colour of it, so yay. Anyway, thank you all for listening, I hope you're having a fantastic week, stay safe and I will see you all next week. Bye!